good afternoon. <laughs> After this session, <laughs> I'm a deaf guy, no? <laughs> but I will try to do my best. Uh, okay, my name is... <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> my name is Sandro Pereira. I'm from Portugal. I'm um, a strong community member. I write for a Portuguese magazine. I have my own blog, Sandro ASP Bistalk blog. I'm a member of Bistalk uh, admin blogging community and Bistalk Brazil. Bistalk uh, Netpoint in Portugal. I'm a moderator of Bistalk forums. I'm a tech network in India. Code gallery, code plex, public speaker, and a technical reviewer of Tivgen books. Awesome book, by the way. And um, my session will be about uh, Bistalk mapper patterns, <coughs> common problems that you can find in mappings, and how can we solve that problems. And then I will try to make a <coughs> small introduction to the new uh, transformation designer of Wava Maps. And if I have time, I will try to, try to uh, give some best practice that you can have when de developing our map, map, maps. Sorry, my English. So why I decided to for giving this speak is because I'm been writing an ebook that will be free. It will be released soon. I don't know, probably one month or two. Uh, probably be Bistalk 360 that will publish that. Um, so there's about uh, 12 patterns that I, I try to describe. The other thing I love that to, to this topic is that uh, this is one of the mo most common features in uh, or artifacts in Bistalk. You can skip orchestration, you can uh, develop or, or not pipelines, but schemas and maps are almost every, every solutions are there. So that's why I love this topic, and also because there isn't a right or good way, and you can find many ways to solve a small problem, okay? Some are more efficient, so are, uh, some are, are more easy to read and to maintain, but they are, all, all of them are good. It all depends <laughs> on the problem that you are facing, okay? Uh, if you are a, a, a strong developer, maybe you are you're skipping the mapping and you'll try to do everything with custom XSLT in, uh, inline or, or uh, external file. But you, if you are a, 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 a junior developer or not a strong XSLT developer, you will try to do everything with the maps, okay? And the both are, uh, both, both approach are, are good, okay? What I'm, my my vision, my my personal opinion, I like to use the best of both worlds. Okay, I don't. I try to skip the XSLT file, custom file. I will do that only if I really, really, really need performance. If it's a, a, a requirement of my client, okay. Uh, otherwise, I will try to mix mapping, XSLT, C sharp to get the best approach because I believe that more easy to read, more easy to maintain by an, uh, a big team or a small team, okay? Because not all members of your team may know XSLT and the client also uh, can make small changes. I have some examples that I made in the past and the, the client with no strong uh, 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 Bistalk skills were able to switch and fix some minor problems in the, in, the, in the map. So that's my approach that I will try to explain, okay? So uh, the first are the easy ones, Zedek translation mapping. How can we uh, transform one message if the target schema is uh, similar but have a, a different uh, um, order of the elements, different names, or a different target namespace? The second is the normal that we do, data translation. How can we take a source element and translate to a different uh, data format, okay? Uh, content enrich pattern. How can we uh, 
enrich the message if the target, the source schema is, don't have all the elements available. <coughs> Aggregator, how can we join multiple messages to combine them as a whole and process to the target uh, schema? Uh, content filter or data cleaning, how can we clean or reduce the unnecessary uh, elements in the, in the source schema? Splitter pattern, how can we take one uh, message and divide to different messages to send to different uh, uh, systems. These normal are the most difficult and they are normally together. Grouping and shorting. How can we do that in, uh, in maps? Uh, conditional pattern. How can we, based on some condition, translate the, the information? Looping patterns, also a problem, because using loopings inside the maps can create a lot of XSLP noise, okay? You need to be careful, inspect the, the file, and try to get the best approach, the best implementation. Can only conduct a model pattern. It's normally used in pipelines to transform different, and different, different but similar messages to a canonical file, okay? And, name value transformation pattern. This is more, I've seen many scenarios now with name value. You have a schema with a key value and you need to translate to a hierarchical schema or the other one. I, how can we do this? This is some of the patterns I will try to explain <coughs> in my demos, okay? I will, I, I'm, I'm being really fast in this because I really want you to show how can you do this. So. Demos. Okay, the first is really easy. How can we, data, data uh, sorry, direct translation. We have very good uh, ways to do that. We just need to drag and drop and link by structure, link by name, or mass copy. Really easy. It, the map will try to do everything for us. Copy. Mass copy, mass copy can be useful when we are using uh, the <coughs> en, any element. The problem with that is like, if you test that, <coughs> where's my output? Okay. Uh, it's fast, it requires less, uh, uh, operations, but he also put all the namespace in the in the elements. And normally, there's no problem in there. But sometimes you need to remove that namespace because the target don't accept that. Okay. So you can create your personal custom mass copy function. Okay. This is, was taken for the, the other example, but I'm doing everything with XSLT. Of course, you can create everything in an in a external file, but I really like better to put an uh, inline XSLT. I think it's better to read. And with just a few codes, total dynamic, I'm taking the name, oh, sorry, the name of the elements and the, the value, so it's completely dynamic. And if I test this, output, <coughs> oh sorry, you can see, easy to accomplish, okay? So, thank you. Uh, I think we'll be, data translation, this is normal. It's, what you what we do normally <coughs> concatenate elements translate data from age uh, see if the element is there to to uh, mapping create uh, additional information whatever okay and here i'm doing is really is to 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 read i'm taking for example the the phone uh, uh, id the international code, I am making some calculation if it's a national call or international call, 
and I create the total view, okay? Uh, the problem is that in these kind of scenarios, uh, the map is creating a lot of noise for us. If you try to validate the map, you can see that uh, in each uh, looping or in each calculation, we have the uh, for each, for each one. For each for calculating international calls, for each for creating a national calls. So this is a good approach to small message, but when we are dealing with large measures, we need to be careful and try to improve this. Okay, I just make a stupid code, but to improve that part, I just take all the C sharp functions that were uh, present in the in the last uh, map. I I pass to uh, global variables and global functions, and I just repeat the same inline XSLT code without the ec the extra for each. So I only use one for each. I'm calculating the national and the international. So with a small change. Uh, I improved my map um, even better performance, okay? Uh, if I test it, let me test this one. You can see I have internationals in national calls. So, but this is very easy, these two. Okay, content enrichment. How can we enrich a message with the uh, uh, elements that are not there. For this case, I create, uh, I take this scenario, working with constants, okay? Uh, normally, we put a lot of constants inside our maps. So, what kind of constants that we can have? We can have uh, static constants that each time you need to change, you need to deploy the map, or dynamic constants. Dealing with uh, static, we have five ways to do it. You can put on the uh, schema with the value, okay? This is not the default value of the schema. The default value is empty. This is the value. You are creating a XSLT rule saying put this value in, the, in this element, okay? You can do it by C sharp. I don't like it, but you can do it. You can create an <coughs> inline XSLT. The normal one, you can create a, a, a string concatenate with value. I really annoy, the, this is really annoying for me because I don't like, it's not readable. And you can use a custom functoid that's available, uh, that is a constant functoid. I love this because at least you can look and read that is a constant, okay? So working with dynamic constants, where you can pu put your configurations of your application? You can use the SSO, right? Very well, one of the best, but you have to create a code to read. I already create a, a functoid, so you can take the the file from the enterprise single sign on by specifying the application and the, the, the key that you want. You can put in the install configuration file. It's possible, but each time you need to change, you need to restart your instance, so it's not a good po uh, approach. You can put in the external, external configuration file. The problem is that, <coughs> is that you need to specify the path of that configuration file. That this can be a problem when deploying. And uh, you can put on the register, also a good idea, but in terms of maintaining a multiple environment, you need to maintain several registers. And you can use the system environment, don't use it. Uh, you can use a custom database uh, the problem with the custom database is you need to specify the connection string, so it, you need to additional put another external configuration. Otherwise, you need to you have any serious problems 
in development, staging, and production. And the other one is business rules. You actually can use business rules to uh, um, <coughs> create your configuration and very easy to deploy, very easy to create new versions. And you just need to put the definition in the, the, um, the voca vocabulary that you need to, to, to get, okay? And uh, if I test, believe this all configured, You can see that I'm taking everything from SSO, business, uh, business configuration file, configuration files, and so on. Okay? It's really a simple uh, scenario, but we do, we do this a lot of time. Okay? <coughs> so, aggregation. How can we join uh, multiple messages? So, Joining multiple messages only works inside orchestration, okay? You need to create an orchestration and blah, 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 make a transformation and give two input files, no? Very easy to do. Uh, we can try to combine different messages only by using uh, functoids and links. Uh, for example, this case, but this is not working because we only take the first element uh, of, uh, of the user ID. Uh, if I test it, you see that the second ID is only get the first ID that's on top. That's because I'm not using a loop. I'm trying to join two messages without the looping, okay? One approach, uh, is that you can use uh, global variables to uh, uh, to to save that, that that value. So, for example, in this case, I'm getting the user ID. You can create the int user ID outside, and th this is a global variable for Bistalk. Okay, and you have the set uh, user ID that only. Uh, put the value inside the, the variable and return the same value. So I'm only using one looping. And you, need to, you need to think that we need to always read from the right to the left. So when I, I have two loops, but I'm all, uh, in the first iteration, I will, I will run first this loop and try to map the user ID, the last name, first name, and then I will try to make the address. And here, I'm getting the get user ID. So I always have the user ID that I want, okay? Uh, also, you can do this by the, for me, the best way is create a template and pass the value and everything work fine, okay? So, what I like here is another approach is how we can send uh, orchestration variables to our maps. And this is the same approach. The best approach and the only approach I, I recommend is creating an additional uh, support uh, um, message that I'm constructing here just for demo, okay? And pass it in the multiple incoming message to the map. That is the only way that I advise you to do that, okay? The rest is the same. But we, we can actually use a custom functoid to get this variable from the orchestra this variable for the orchestration. I don't advise that because is doing a lot of reflection, and is not good for performance. The other thing is like, you can do the same stuff using an external assembly, just to uh, put the elements there and get the elements from the, the, value, the stored values. What I did was 
create, let me check, a list uh, additioner with the data. In the orchestration, I'm putting the, the variables in, in that additioner, <coughs> and in the mapping, I'm getting the, that, uh, that values. Also, not very good for performance, because, not performance. You can have memory leaking using that approach. But for small maps can be an alternative, but the best way is always using an external, uh, external message, okay? So, uh, content filter. Uh, let me check what I'm trying to do that. There's a lot of mappings. I don't remember everyone. Oof. Sorry, guys. I forget this one. Okay, no, I remember now. This is a simple one. So we are getting uh, elements for the source and directly linked to the, to the destination without any kind of problem. This is what we are used to do. And using the map works very well. But for example, removing duplicate for a message, that can be a challenger, okay? So we can, Try to do this by using only functoids with a little of code, of course. I'm creating here a list of the, the elements that are already, the order numbers that I already pass and try to see if they already exist. This is not uh, a good solution. Also can, can have some memory problems, I think. But it's possible for small measures, we can test it and see that all the duplication, so you have a order zero, order zero, order one, <coughs> and if uh, I see the other result, the end result, you can see that I remove, I remove one of the other zero, and you can use uh, two ways to do that, the two best ways to do that. One using the axis procedural sibling for grouping. Uh, that's really fast for a uh, small message. But if you want to do the same approach with large messages, this can have a decrease of performance. You need to switch and, and try an, a different approach. This is really easy to do, a small code. I'm uh, procedural sibling is seeing this if uh, is like the same of the list, is seeing that if I already processed that order number in the past, and just <coughs> copy and um, copy everything from one side to the other. Okay. Uh. If I test again, see if it work. You can see it already did the so. Or, they have, in, if they, they are, don't have it in the same order, it's, don't care. It does the job anyway. Because you already, if you have order zero, order one, order zero, when you get to the second order zero, it knows that the order zero was processed later, uh, after. So, it's keep that one, okay? And uh, for large messages, you can use machine grouping. I don't know if you already know about. Uh, machine is, is you need to create a key and say that what you are try what the element that you are trying to use, that in this case the order number, and match the, to the order that is the, the element, the record here. Okay? So, uh, I need to create this uh, functoid separate to create the global key. Otherwise, the mention group doesn't work. You need to create an external file and do everything with an external file. So, and the rest is almost the same. You need to in f 
make a for each for uh, each key that is generated and get the elements. So it's grouping all the elements and you get one of the elements, okay? Uh, if you check, everything in order. So I'm being really quick because I have many things to show and you will find out every single advantage, disadvantage, how can you do that by reading the free book. So I try to be a little fast. So splitting patterns. Sometimes I, 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 I see people saying that you can only mapping one to two message, uh, one to many. That's not the case. You can map one to many or many to many. Okay. Okay. So grouping, shorting, that's one of the main problems. Okay. Uh, that's one of the, the difficult uh, stuff to do in BSTOP because you need, real, need to use XSLT files or XSLT code. So again, you can use axis for preceding sibling. In this case, I'm, I'm mixing, uh, mixing different uh, uh, <coughs> scripts. I'm creating an inline script that calls another script that is uh, <coughs> templates just to do the transformation, okay? You can, that's a beautiful or map is you can join C sharp, templates, inline CSLT, just to, to, to get the right approach, to improve a little more your approach and get the final uh, solution, the best solution f in your problem, okay? In this case, I'm creating uh, a for each with preceding sibling and inside of for each, I'm calling the template uh, just for mapping the name and the value, okay? Because I'm, I'm trying to order everything. Let me show you the message. Test map. So I, I, I have this one. I, I, I want to join every single header and uh, join all the name values and so on. <coughs> so you can see the final result. And you can see that it's all together, okay? And very small pieces to do. So you can have, again, machine grouping. It's almost the same. You just need to create the key again and uh, generate, make a for each and try to loop it again. This time I need to make a for each to get all the elements that are inside that group, okay? So, this, but if you want to try a multi uh, grouping uh, level, that's even more harder. So, in this case, let me see the solution again. Test map. Okay, I want to make all the calculations based on the <coughs> the type and the city, and you can see that is plus ten, less two hundred, a hundred, two hundred, and so on. So I need to. <laughs> Join this by group by type city and make the calculation of the price. Okay. So create a, a multi-level. I need to make this type of concatenation by city and type. I'm joining the bolts and um, grouping them, and then I can just again for each with uh, make a for each inside that and make the same calculations of the of the all the elements okay I test the map you can see that <coughs> it made all the price this is small problems, but you can find really these problems in real case scenarios in the big mapping transformation. So, but explaining a big map is quite difficult. So 
It's better to explain small and simple problems so that you see the right approach that you can have in the mapping, okay? Looping. <laughs> and conditions, always a problem, no? So, <laughs> if, else, and so on, blah, 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 it's really easy to, to do, but it can be very hard to maintain. And this is a simple mapping transformation. What I'm trying to do is get all the business managers, all the assistants, and the rest of the guys like me, the employees, and divide them in different, uh, different records. You can see that I'm saying equal to CEO, and equal to director goes to the business manager, assistant, business assistant goes to the business assistant, and all the rest go to the employees. I have to make this or not is, is really, really annoying to read and difficult to maintain if, if your map increases a little. And if I validate also the map XSLT, you can have big problems with large measures because it put a lot, lot of for each of mm, the same uh, if condition, get the same message, a lot of noise in, in inside, okay? Um, so how, how can we improve this? Oh, we can improve it a little by putting a little C-sharp in there. At least I don't have that annoying seven functoids just to get the conditions. I can simplify the conditions here, okay? Again, if I analyze the XSLT, is not the best way because it's still making a lot of loopings, okay? So, to avoid this, a grouping, motion, I love motion, by the way, uh, group by role, and in each one of them, I'm getting, give me all the roles that is a CEO and a director. I'm mapping, fast. Let me check what I hear. This is a real case also. Uh, trying to get some particular values from the path. Is the path equal to one? I need to take the time, one, time value one and so on. Again, really simple, easy to read, a good uh, approach for small message. But if you analyze again the XSLT code, You can see that you can have view source. You can have really problems in performance because for each one you have a for each, for each, for each, for each, and so on and so on and so on. No? So good for small measures, bad for uh, medium and large measures, and if you want performance. So let's try to improve make XSLT and get the right values based on some queries, okay? <laughs> Easy and simple. Two minutes that I have. Two more minutes. Okay, give me five. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so on, so on. Uh, I want to show you a name value. Easy to, to do, but amazing. <laughs> is annoying to maintain, you need to get all the, the names, all the values, and if you change, if you miss one of them, you are in zero problems, you need to delete and do everything again. So you can improve by using uh, this one, but this is a problem. <laughs> again, with a lot of looping, if and conditions. So, XSLT, best way to do it, okay? Easy and simple to maintain. <coughs> I need to switch again. Sorry, guys. Too much information. So, uh, sorry. Oh. Okay. That's what you have on the server, a really rich uh, mapper design with functoids and every translation with inline XSLT, okay? 
what you have, what you have now is a, trans a new transformation design. It looks like the same, but it's not the same, okay? You have operation instead of functions, but it's the same. And uh, the transformation are created by extended application market language, okay? It's not the same. Oh, I'm missing the, okay. In terms of operation, you can do everything in the Visual Server. You can debug and test and validate everything inside Visual Studio. They will, they will uh, uh, improve this, but at the time you only can test the map, no debug and so on. Even the properties, you cannot specify very well the input files and so on. So they will improve this. You can use external XSLT and external .NET assembly. Fortunately for us, transformation design also support XSLT, okay? Let's see a small example of that one. You saw by John Fancy uh, session the migration tool. It works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't work. For example, this was one of the scenarios that we, sh we show, the, did see before, and it's getting some errors because it's missing. You cannot translate everything. It was a little confused, so it gets stuck here. You do a lot of good job on the, on the other part, but in the calculation of the total cost, we, it, did, it did fail. So, how can we, we need to improve a little. How can we do the, the calculation inside the, the WABA maps? So, we need to create a list. In the list, you need to specify what is the members of the list. This time, I, I'm saying that I have a cost and an indicator. <coughs> Uh, in the indicator, I'm getting the four uh, letters of the phone number. I'm having a awesome functor here. That if is, this, is, this is the if else functoid or operator, I can say if my indicator is the Portuguese code, I say it's a national code. Otherwise, it's an international code, and I'm adding this to. Uh, don't ask me what is this, <laughs> it's a bug. Uh, a cost and the indicator. And I'm adding that to my, my list. Then to make the calculation, I say, give me all the elements that has the indicator one, I. I get all the international elements and I, I select the cost and pass to a sum. And if, if I test it, test it you can see I have the same result, okay? It's a little different. Sometimes in, in Waba maps, you need to create a lot of lists and work with lists, okay? One more sample and I'm over. So, name value. Again, you saw that before. Uh, this was my first approach. Uh, if conditions and, uh, and uh, uh, selection, but if you test, it doesn't work. You only get the first element. Because in Bistalk maps, uh, the mapper will try to be smarter than you and create the for each. In this case, you need to explicitly say, I'm in a for each, okay? So you only get the first one. I try, but was unable to create a for each and, and put conditions there, but it's not possible, so. Again, it fails. Second, the third solution was create a map each for each one. It's not uh, a good approach, several looping. So what I need to create, again, it was another list, add to that list, and get all the elements for that list.